Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to YC Cooks and Bakes. I'm YC. Today, I'm going to be doing a tag for you. I was tagged by Life with Mike to do 10 weird things about me. And if you have never heard of Life with Mike, I urge you to go check his channel out. He has something for everyone. Uh, you're going to want to check out Life with Mike because he has a little uh, cat that he calls Kitty. And I mean, he does gardening from spring all the way through fall. He even has stuff growing through the winter and he'll tell you about it. He has um, uh, ask tablet time. If you have burning questions, you ask them with, on a, um, with a, uh, everyone else that you know goes and views his channel so that you can learn together and then you wouldn't believe we have some good laughs some of the things that come in are hilarious or uh, some of the questions that are answered the the answers are really funny and you can learn together that way and it's a lot of fun and then um, he does cook with me videos and walk with me videos and he does a lot of taste tests and reviews and um, he just has a lot of different things. He shop with me videos and drive with me videos. He has something for everyone. And um, if you have someone that is ill in your family, he does uh, early morning prayer time each and every single day. And uh, they'll be put on a prayer list and we will all pray together for them. So it would be really worth your while to go check out the Life with Mike channel. And I thank him for tagging me. Okay, so we're going to get started today on this 10 weird things about me. Um, and I would, I'll start way back from when I was really, really little and kind of work my way back, work my way up. Okay, so the very first thing that was probably weird about me was that when I was really, you know, young, like before school time even, um, I wouldn't talk. I just didn't talk. Um, and, um, you know, I... My parents would have company, they would have get togethers and maybe little parties and people would try to talk to me and I never would answer back. I would sit in a chair and just, you know, view everyone and take everything in and I would look at everyone and I may smile or whatever, but I never spoke. And um, no matter where we went, I just, I would not speak. And it got to the point where my mom, my mom was getting worried as she even asked the doctor, you know, what is wrong is, do we need to do something? Is there a step we need to take or, you know, cause she's not talking and we're very concerned. Well, it, it got to where they, I could talk and, and the doctors knew that. And, um, they assured her that I could talk and I did, I started talking and I could talk the whole time. I just didn't, I just chose not to for whatever reason. And a big part of it, I think was I was shy because uh, if, if somebody said something to me in a grocery store and I was that tiny, I would hide behind my mom's leg and I, I always would grab one of my mom's legs. I was very, very shy. And I think that's part of that. Okay, that's that people may think that that's weird that a little kid would never ever talk and they could, you know. Um, and uh, let's see. And the second thing was when I was a little bit older, not maybe not quite uh, kindergarten yet, but right at that age, you know, where I was playing with toys and stuff like that. Um, my mom would make lunch all the time. And my, my favorite thing was like little cans of beans. I just love those things. But she made me a hot dog. And I don't know if I had just had a lot of hot dogs lately. I remember we had a lot of tuna fish sandwiches going through school. But at that, that time, she would make hot dogs a lot. Of course, because they were economical. They were quick. It was made a great lunch. And it was hot. And you could put it with soup or whatever, right? Um, but I didn't want mine. And I can't remember if... Uh, I don't, you know how back then they would say, oh, well, you know, um, you know, you should eat your food. So some, some kids don't have any. Well, I think I got that in my head. Well, I'll mail it to them. I think I just got that in my head. But anyway, back then I lived in a city in Canada and uh, we didn't have where you walk to the end of the driveway, put your mail in and put a flag up. This, the only mailboxes we had in the city there was like one big metal box on a corner that... Uh, was for the whole neighborhood. You know, those great big, like here they would be federal, up there would be provincial, those great big metal city boxes like you see in front of a postal office. And um, I walked all the way to down the road 
and about five or six houses, I can't remember how many it was, and I pulled that great big metal thing down, and I mailed my hot dog, ketchup and all. That's kind of weird, I know. I was a weird kid. Okay, and then um, then later on in life, um, when I was old enough to be in school, uh, still it, going to school in Canada, um, it was winter time, and in winter time in Canada, you had mittens and hats and scarves and you name it, and uh, snow pants and and snow boots and you name it. Well, in order to keep the classroom floors dry, after coming in from all that snow, we would line up our boots at the back of um, uh, along the hallways. You know, not in the middle of the hall, but along the, the wall, like, before you go into the classroom door. And those boots belong to the kids in that classroom and so forth. And each classroom had their own. Okay. Well, this kid, and I remember his name and everything, which I won't mention, but he would bug me every day. He'd take my mitts and throw my scarf and move my coat while I was trying to put my boots on and take my boots off. Just bug me, bug me, bug me. And somebody said it was because he liked me. Well, it, it just drove me crazy. So I grabbed one of his boots and I marched all the way to the other end of the hall. And you know how those big metal school doors are with the big metal bar and you push it down and the door opens like in a gymnasium. Well, and I took his boot and it, there, I mean, it was snowing out and there was a lot of snow in the schoolyard. I whipped that boot out in the snow as hard as I could throw it. And I thought, there, now you go get your boot now. Well, <laughs> I got in trouble. So we both were sent to the principal's office. <laughs> so you might have, might think that was a little weird that I threw his boot way out in the snow. I just had had enough. People say, oh, you're so mean. <laughs> I just had enough. Okay. Um, and let's see. And then um, another thing that happened later on after that was... Um, I don't know if it's so much weird as it's just something you don't know about me is that I actually have a V scar at the top of my skull if if um, my hair like if I just wake up and my hair is not brushed yet or freshly washed you'd see the little it looks like a V like a bird like and what that was is a scar from a swing a park swing um, my sister who's two years older than me, I have two sisters, but the one that's two years older than me, she was swinging and she would go up and I would run under the swing and she, she'd come back this way and I'd run under it again. I just kept going back and forth while she went back and forth on the swing. Well, she slowed down, but my momentum stayed the same and the back of that rectangular uh, seat that she was sitting on, the corner of it hit me and cracked my skull. <laughs> It wasn't her fault. I shouldn't have been running under her swing, right? <laughs> we just thought it was fun. And I ended up at um, the hospital with a cracked skull <laughs> with a big V in it. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, okay. Um, another thing. Dreams. Dreams. Uh, dreams. I would see things happen uh, a week or two ahead or a few days. I would have a dream and then it would come true. So I, things were coming to me in dreams and that was very evident early on. And you know, you, you if you tell some people, they're like, yeah, all right. They don't want to believe that. But yeah, things came to me in dreams quite often. And I even saw two of the funerals that ha occurred in my husband's family way before they even happened. So, yeah. Also, uh, and then another thing um, was the sense of smell uh, would signal to me something's happening. If it was like, um, for instance, when my, right before uh, my husband's grandfather in Charleston, South Carolina, before he passed away, my grandfather came around me one night when my husband was working second shift. And my oldest boy was just a little baby in a bassinet at the time. And I only had one light on 
in the house in the in the laundry room i was folding clothes and out of the clear blue and it was not anything i put in the detergent trust me this was a dead ringer for royal copenhagen cologne i smelt it like overwhelmingly this is men's cologne an overwhelming and it was definitely my grandfather's and he i think was coming that was the warning i got that something was going to happen. And sure enough, five o'clock that next morning, we received a call that my husband's grandfather uh, had passed away. And that's one of the funerals where I had seen a couple weeks ahead of time. Um, and we're not gonna get into that because I actually saw my husband in it as a pallbearer and everything. I don't wanna get into that, blah, blah, blah. It's a long story and I felt faint and everything when it happened, when, I, when it occurred to me. Okay. Uh, the other thing, let's see, um, that you may not know about me, uh, that I was in a couple accidents. Um, I was, I had one time I had a Lincoln Continental and I was, uh, coming down a highway in South Carolina and, um, This, I had gone into a McDonald's to get, my husband had wanted something from there. And when I was coming out of it, it was next to a food line and a trucker came out of food line at the same time, but he had, he didn't realize I'd already came out of the, um, out of the McDonald's because the, the way the sun was shining, the sun was shining so bright, like he couldn't barely see, but he'd pulled out onto the highway and he hit me um, and my car spun around. It went around and around and it seemed like at one point, like it was almost slow motion. And when I, it, it stopped and when I came to, I could hear all this crunching and it was people driving over uh, my mirror and, and my bumper and my lights and things that had fallen off my Lincoln it just you could hear crush crush crack crackle 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 that was people dragging parts of my car down the highway because on the other side of the food line was a light and the light had turned green so cars had started to come down the highway and at this time i was supposed to be coming this way and my vehicle was this way because i had spun around so many times okay so that that occurred it's not weird but just something you may not know about me and there was another um accident where um my husband, I would take my husband to work every day when we lived out in the, in the country. And uh, this farmer, he had a lot of land in that neighborhood that we lived in. And he had a tree where part of it was broke and just part of a limb was hanging like this over the road. And every day we would drive and we would see that big limb just hanging there. And we're thinking, and my, and finally, after a few times of seeing that, both my husband and I said, that's going to come down one of these days and one of these storms, that's going to come down. You know, you could just tell when an old tree or something that's broke is going to eventually come down. And we had just talked about it. And I don't know why my camera looks like it's freezing up. But anyway, um... It came down right in front of us when we were driving on a humid, warm, musty, humid South Carolina morning. It was dark, it was humid, and it was, it was real, the air was real thick, like it wanted, like it was getting ready to rain, like it needed to rain. It was very muggy, very close, and the tree came, it was it saturated from days and days of raining already. And it was humid and, you know, um, tropical. And that tree had come down right in front of us. And that branch that we made a comment on broke through my car front windshield and came head on like this. And um, my airbag deployed. But when I opened my eyes, because my husband hit me on the arm and said, we got to get up, get up, get up. We got to get out of here because we didn't know if the car was going to go on fire or what because we hit the rest of the tree that had fallen and our airbags deployed. Uh, and that tree was like a couple inches away from going through my head. It really scary. Um, 
it did something to me and my my legs were shaking and I, I had to sit down on the ground it just shook me up that bad okay so let's move on from that I don't want to relive that okay um, and another thing um, that I see orbs I see gold orbs all the time all the time I used to see them around my son's band um, I used to see them I remember when um, my husband's father passed um, I saw one come around my youngest before he got on the school bus to go to pre-k um, and I see them and then they vanish and um, I saw one one night uh, when I was coming out of my bedroom and it went through me as I was on my way to the kitchen you might find that weird but I will see orbs okay uh, you can make with there's long stories around all this and what we think it meant but is I'm not gonna get into all that right at this time uh, the other thing is um, if I'm sitting next to someone who I haven't seen in a while it, the longer I'm with someone, the harder it is to detect things and pick up on things. But if I haven't seen someone for, we had some friends that visited us from another town, and I can uh, pick up on things mentally from their mind because we tried it, uh, and they were also good at being able to do that. This particular person, and um, they thought of two numbers and they wrote them down on a piece of paper. Numbers. Uh, they said let's pick anything from 0 to 20 and they wrote down two numbers and I guess them I just looked into their eyes and I and I looked they say you have a third eye and I don't know if you've ever read anything about that but I guessed 19 and 11 and I got both of them right dead ringers and it really um, shook up this person's wife because she didn't know that I was able to do that okay um, the other thing that you may find weird about me is that, um, and you probably have never heard it on here, uh, but I have a high pitched laugh like my mom has it and I think I got it from my mom and you won't hear it unless I'm really, really excited or laughing. Like if I hear a really good comedian, I, it will come out and it's, it's loud and it's high pitched and I have, um, her laugh and you may find that something weird about me, but, um. Uh, the person that I would like to tag um, is, if only if they would like to do it, it, the 10 weird things about me is Keto Rific Journey. And I believe his name is also Mike and he is from, him and his lovely wife live in, I believe, Georgia. But uh, yes, if Keto Rific Journey, you check out his channel. He does um, all kinds of great cooking videos if you're into uh, cooking uh, for keto and you need to check his channel out it's really enjoyable he he did um, egguary for January and he's doing loveuary for for February because of Valentine's and he makes all kinds of dishes that are that are keto friendly and um, he shows you his journey where he's lost a lot of weight and you know they just eat healthier and um, you'll enjoy it trust me um, so I hope that everybody has enjoyed this please go check out the channel life with Mike and um, I thank you for coming to see me today bye bye